Good morning, members of faculty and delegates. My name is Dr. Dhruv Narayan, and I'm a second year radiology, radiology resident at uh, Maharishi Markandeshwar Institute of Medical Sciences and Research. I'm going to be presenting my paper today on the role of MRI in differentiating benign from malignant breast lesions using dynamic contrast enhanced MR and diffusion weighted imaging. So uh, breast cancer accounts for about, uh, is, a, is the second most common cancer in Indian women and is, is a significant cause of worldwide morbidity and mortality. Majority of lesions are benign, and therefore it is important to distinguish the benign from the malignant lesions. Conventional mammography and ultrasound with the cornerstones in diagnosis, however, they, they have been shown to have a high false positive rate in the detection of breast malignancies, and therefore causing unwarranted biopsies. MRI techniques have been shown to have a higher diagnostic accuracy, and therefore they can help reduce the number of unwarranted biopsies. Dynamic contrast enhanced images, as well as diffusion weighted images, have been used as an adjunct uh, to ultrasound and mammography to increase the diagnostic accuracy as well as monitor the response to uh, to three-year treatment. The aims and objectives of the study were to evaluate the role of diffusion-weighted imaging and dynamic contrast-enhanced imaging uh, in differentiating between benign from malignant lesions and compar comparison of our findings with the histopathological diagnosis. A total of 30 patients were, conduct were included in the study uh, who presented with a palpable breast lump with either positive or negative uh, ultrasound or, ma or mammographic findings. The MRI machine used in my study was the Multiva 1.5 Tesla machine with a dedicated breast eye recoil. T1, T2, spare or fat sat T2 weighted images were obtained. The diffusion weighted images using uh, P values of 0 to 1000 and ADC were calculated. Dynamic contrast MR images were performed with IV gadolinium, a single pre contrast scan, and four post contrast, contrast scans over a period of four minutes and 24 seconds was performed and our findings were compared with histological, histopathological pathological findings. So the results of my study have been uh, tabulated, which I'm, going to such, uh, which I'm going to discuss with you. So uh, according to the pathological final diagnosis, uh, out of 30 lesions, uh, 10 were benign and 20 were malignant. Amongst the benign lesions, fibroadenoma was the most common benign pathology, while intraductal carcinoma was the most common malignant lesion. All patients with benign lesions were less than 40 years of age, while 13 out of 20 patients with malignant lesions were more than 30 years of age. The mammographic findings revealed that majority of the benign lesions were single and unilateral. All the malignant lesions in the study were unilateral. However, four out of 20 were multiple. The most common shape in the study was either round or oval, accounting for six out of 10 benign breast lesions. Four out of 10 breast lesions, benign breast lesions, at irregular shape with granulomatous mastitis accounting for two of such lesions. In my study, 18 out of 20 malignant breast lesions had an irregular shape on mammography with 11 showing speculations. On mammography, architectural distortion and calcification were uncommonly seen with benign lesions, whereas they were far more common with malignant lesions. Similarly, skin thickening and axillary lymphadenopathy also were far more common with malignant lesions as compared to benign lesions. None of the benign lesions showed nipple retraction, whereas it was present in eight out of 20 malignant lesions. So mammography correctly characterized six out of 10 benign breast lesions as virates two and three. However, one case of granulomatous mastitis, two fibroadenomas, and one intraductal papilloma were falsely ca characterized as malignant by mammography. Mammography correctly characterized 17 out of 20 lesions as malignant, which is virates four or five. However, three cases of intraductal carcinoma were falsely characterized as benign. Moving on to the MR findings of my study, majority of the benign lesions were in the size range of 2 to 5 centimeters, while 11 out of 20 lesions were more than 5 centimeters in size. The most common shape, again, was either round or oval, and uh, accounting for 6 out of 10 benign breast lesions. 4 out of 10 benign breast lesions had an irregular shape, with granulomatous mastitis accounting for 2 out of such cases. In my study, 17 out of 20 malignant breast lesions had an irregular shape, with 13 of them showing speculations. So majority of the breast lesions were either hypointense or heterogeneous on T1, uh, which proved to be benign, while 18 out of 20 malignant breast lesions were hypointense on T1. Six benign cases showed hyperintense signal on T2, while 16 out of 20 malignant cases showed hypointense signal on T2. Uh, on MRI, again, architectural distortion and skin thickening was more commonly seen with, uh, with malignant lesions as compared to benign lesions. Uh, however, 
uh, in one case of chondromatous mastitis, skin thickening was present. One benign lesion also showed nipple retraction, whereas it was present in about half of the malignant lesions. Uh, moving on to the enhancement patterns, six out of 10 benign lesions showed homogeneous enhancement, out of which three of them were fibroadenomas. Two cases of granulomatous mastitis showed rim enhancement. All the malignant lesions showed heterogeneous enhancement pattern on dynamic contrast images. Only two out of 10 benign breast lesions showed non-mass enhancement, both of which were granulomatous mastitis. Two out of 20 malignant lesions showed non-mass enhancement, with one case each of intraductal carcinoma and intralobular carcinoma. The dynamic curve pattern of my uh, lesions uh, were seven out of 10 benign breast lesions showed a type one curve, and the rest showed a type two dynamic curve. 15 out of 20 malignant lesions showed a type three dynamic curve. Four out of 20 malignant lesions showed a type two dynamic curve. One case of intraductal carcinoma showed a type one curve. Eight out of 10 benign lesions did not show restricted diffusion on DWI, whereas two cases of granulomatous mastitis did restrict. All the malignant lesions also showed restricted diffusion on DWI. Now I'm going to be presenting two cases uh, which I have included in my study. This is a case of a 37 year old female presenting with a lump in the left breast. In this, we can see that left breast shows multiple closely placed lesions in the lower inner quadrant at the seven to eight o'clock position. Uh, the masses appear hypointense on T1 and, hypo, uh, and hyperintense on stir images. They also appear hypointense on T2. The lesion shows slight speculation. However, no skin thickening, pectoral uh, muscle invasion or chest wall invasion is seen. Slight nipple retraction was observed. On diffusion restriction, on diffusion weighted images, diffusion restriction was noted and uh, a type 3 dynamic time intensity curve was obtained. This is the second case of an intraductal carcinoma. This is a 35 year old female who complained of lump in the left breast. Here again, we can see that there is a large irregularly shaped lesion with speculated margins in the left retro areolar region, which appears hyper intense on T1 and T2 images, and hyper intense on stir. On spur. The lesion is seen extending superiorly to skin, causing skin thickening and nipple retraction. However, no gross invasion of the pectoral muscles of the chest wall could be seen. It restricted on diffusion of weighted images and showed a type 3 dynamic time intensity curve. So several conclusions were drawn from my study, uh, which were as follows. Among the benign lesions, fibroadenoma was the most common benign pathology, and intraductal carcinoma was the most common malignant pathology. Mammography correctly char char characterized 6 out of 10 lesions as benign and 17 out of 20 lesions as malignant. However, Three cases of intraductal carcinoma were falsely characterized as benign. MRI of the breast was far more accurate than mammography in differentiating between benign and breast lesions. MRI correctly characterized nine out of 10 lesions as benign and all malignant lesions as BIRATS5. The sensitivity of DWI and dynamic contrast images was calculated as 95 and 95% respectively, which remained 95% when a positive result from either of them was accepted as malignancy. The specificity of DWI and dynamic contrast was calculated as 95 and 70%, which increased to 80% when a positive result from either of them was accepted as a malignancy. Thank you for your time. Uh,